Professor Rogers was a very special person. He was born and raised in Minnesota, St. Peter, Minnesota. And as a young man, he knew he wanted to work with students. He knew he wanted to start a school. And he had dreams of coming to California. He did do that. He came to California walking part of the way, taking the train, traveling with a friend. Uh, he came and, and had some work in, in some schools and really wanted to start his own school. And in 1910, he had that opportunity. He had located a piece of property here. It was a 80-acre uh, mountain prune ranch with uh, one farmhouse and a barn. In the middle of winter, he brought up a group of students and some faculty and literally started the school. One of the things he really wanted to do was to have students engaged, engaged not just in their own learning, but also engaged in the political process. And by that, it did not necessarily mean becoming president of the United States, but it meant understanding the process, knowing how to be a part of the process. And so he created a school that the students ran. Now, that did not mean that they ran chemistry class, but it meant that they ran the discipline, they ran the fun, uh, they organized activities, and they chose the people that would do that through elections. He was a very staunch believer in uh, student government, that st the students should learn to govern themselves. And so the school was established on that basis. We had a very strong student government that handled almost everything. The school, it was kind of, I don't know how to say it, that if you tried to run a school like we ran this one today, forget it, you'd never be allowed to do it. Because uh, each one of us worked, everybody had a job, uh, even first graders. When uh, on Saturdays, first thing in the morning, Saturday morning after breakfast, everybody got out and cleaned up the campus, uh, picked up the laundry to take to the laundry, uh, did all of the upkeep, we mowed all the lawns. Uh, those of us that were interested in horses worked at the barn, uh, which included shoveling the manure and, and so forth. Montezuma was kind of, in a way, self-sufficient. The student government just pretty much controlled everything. Very little was ever overruled by the uh, faculty. Uh, it, was, it was just something that uh, we were expected to do, and, and we did it. The whole emphasis, too, was on you being a citizen of Montezuma. You, uh, you had certain responsibilities, you had rights, but you had a lot of responsibilities too, to be a, <clears throat> to be a good citizen. And behind us is the house uh, that Prof. Rogers lived in uh, while he was headmaster here. Uh, you can see that it's an interesting um, uh, design. He was really fascinated by Pueblo architecture. And so this school, which was called the Montezuma Mountain School, uh, you know, Indian name, and uh, he uh, had the buildings uh, built uh, with the uh, Pueblo style, southwestern style um, architecture. And it was so different for, you know, a young man from, you know, Kentucky comes up here and you're in a southwest Indian environment. And Prof knew with the boys how to run a school that was really, really fun. They said that he was, of course, so far ahead in education at the, at the time because back in the early 1900s, uh, education was pretty cut and dried how you were going to do it. 
and he didn't see it that way. Along with that freedom was the responsibility to be a good person, to be a good student, and to take care of your brothers here at the school, to care about Montezuma. Um, Prof was the kind of person that could inspire that desire to care about each other. And I think that's the, the piece. He cared enough to, to show the kids how to care for their school here uh, at Montezuma. My experience here, and it was just fabulous, uh, best two years of my life. I, I, actually, Professor Rogers was one of the finest people I ever met. There were a lot of qualities about him that have stuck with me all these years. He always said, I never found a boy that I couldn't find some good in. He was a master at that. Anybody that came here is better off for having been here. Prof was a highly moral person, and there was a real strong sense of right and wrong. And uh, living a good life of, of, of concern for others. And they didn't drink coffee, and they weren't allowed to smoke. Prof believed you could not educate someone who was poisoning their body. He had always been of the opinion that if anything good was going to happen in the world, it had to happen with the young people. It just gave me a foundation, a footing, a, a grounding. I've always felt I sort of found myself here. And this was a place where uh, they created a family and lots of fun. And some of the things they did that I love, um, the seniors had a fed in bed day. Uh, and so they would, one night they would bring all their beds out into this courtyard area and seniors would sleep outside overnight and in the morning the juniors would cook breakfast and come out with breakfast on trays and they would feed the seniors. God forbid that you had to lift your fork into your mouth, oh no, a junior would feed you. And um, there were so many things, there were so many traditions up here that the students looked forward to. We used to have what they called the, uh, at the beginning of the school year, it was called the pilgrimage of the pledge. And it was a hiking thing, started off over here by the Redwood Grove and went about four miles up the hill on the other side to the top of the mountain. And when you got up there, or on the way first, we would stop at different places where there would be a teacher that would give you some bit of philosophy of Montezuma. And uh, you get up on the top and uh, Prof would give you the pledge and uh, you had to sign on the dotted line that uh, this was the way you were going to be for the year and you knew that's how you were supposed to act. And so at that point, you were then a citizen of Montezuma for that year. And we did this every year. Well, we had a lot of fun here. You know, I used, when I was police commissioner, I used to go on around and see that everybody was in bed at night, which was fun. The behavior here was a very moral one. Uh, they were interested in girls, just like everybody else. But I think the activities where we had PE all afternoon and on weekends, we usually went on long hikes or we played football all afternoon. And the gym was often open at night so we could go back and I taught them how to do some tumbling and we wrestled and we played basketball and all of those things. So I think we kept them tired enough that uh, some of those other things didn't become quite as important to them as if they had sat around all afternoon watching TV, which we didn't have. The football was, the sports were great. And we really enjoyed football. I mean, we had horseback riding, cattle, pigs. I mean, it was just like a regular ranch. That's why they called it Montezuma Mountain Ranch for Boys. And a uh, great experience. Had uh, anywhere from 125 to 150 kids to deal with on a daily day basis. The Redwood Grove was always quite a place. You know, we always had our graduations there. And we restored the Redwood Grove about 20, uh, uh, 18 or 20 years ago. We, uh, uh, us alumni, several of us people got together and we uh, got some 
a logger on the other side of the hill to cut some logs in half for us and we rebuilt the uh, Redwood Grove, put the benches up there like they were originally and we made a stage much bigger. The original stage was about one third that size. We made a real nice stage and hopefully that this will last for a long time. But it's just a gorgeous place. No one, any, I'm sure every student that's ever come here for the summit, I'm sure everyone will never forget the Redwood Grove. It's a unique place. The prof wanted us to, one, take care of ourselves and then also go out and help take care of other people. Uh, uh, and to have some integrity. And that's basically what we're trying to tell them today. You've got to have some integrity. You've got to go out, work for yourself, but also take care of others, uh, work in the community, um, you know, have a sense of values as in life as well as politics, which is kind of uh, not happening these days. This idea of the young people being the thing that's going to save the world, so to speak. Uh, he would talk to the students about this, particularly the senior high school students. And Prof gave fantastic lectures, you know, for the five years and every Sunday they were just fantastic lectures about all different kinds of things. He graded us on that, it was called social ethics. It was one of our classes. They were inspirational talks. Uh, you know, be dutiful to your country and to nature and to your countrymen and all of that. And uh, they didn't stress any particular creed. He was extremely idealistic, definitely a dreamer. They finally just came to, to the conclusion and they worked together that, hey, let's, let's form something. So they did, they got together and uh, I think there was probably 10 of them that started it. And so the junior state, it started here with, with 10 people. And it isn't just that JSA was born here, it's that the philosophy of the school where JSA was founded, um, has carried through to, for 74 years and keeps this organization strong and growing. And that philosophy is that high school students need to understand their role in government and, and, and politics and particularly in our democracy and that they need to develop critical thinking skills, they need to be um, challenged in their beliefs and challenge the beliefs of others, they need to um, work together to, um, and in JSA, to run their organization in a democratic way. I've belonged to the Montezuma Foundation, and we, we've raised money every summer to bring 50 to 60 students here to learn about what happened here, what the school was like, how it functioned. Kind of tell them about what that situation was like, Prof's ideas. Uh, Prof's beliefs, and uh, so we're just trying to carry that on with the Montezuma Foundation. And often teacher advisors need some training, some support. So in the last uh, several years, there has been um, a new summer retreat called the Montezuma Teacher Fellows Program, where teachers throughout the country, approximately 20, um, meet together for three or four days, uh, share best practices. And we try to get the old students back together and tried to do this type of work, carrying on prof spirit. And I think we've done a pretty good job of it up till now. I, I, I really don't know what the future's gonna bring. I know Junior State obviously wants to continue this type of a thing in the summertime, but uh, the actual members of Montezuma are dwindling pretty fast. Our youngest member right now is 67. So how many more years we can continue, I don't know. But on the other hand, uh, I think somebody can continue to take over.
Don't worry, Mr. Lloyd. My name is Simone Klein, and I am a Montezuman. My name is Summer Wu, and I am a Montezuman. My name is Iman Berai, and I am a Montezuman. My name is Jordan Dickon, and I am a Montezuman. I'm Arnella Kalik, and I'm a Montezuman. My name is Griffin Rubin, and I am a Montezuman. My name is Juliana Joss, and I am a Montezuman. My name is Catherine Edmonds, and I am a Montezuman. My name is Jacob Meisel, and I am a Montezuman. We are all Montezumans! Thank you, Montezuma Foundation, for passing the torch of knowledge about the ideals of Prof. Rogers and the Montezuma School to us, high school student members in the junior state of America. Since 1934, when Prof. founded JSA, we have worked hard to educate ourselves and our peers to perpetuate democratic ideals, the ideals of the Montezuma School and Prof. Rogers. We are committed to keeping the spirit of Prof. Rogers alive in our generation and generations to come. We are all Montezumans!